you know, the, the death of characters has always uh, affected me here. You develop a lot of affection for a character. It actually can be hard to do in two senses. Sometimes even a character you don't particularly like, uh, a villain or a character who's really nasty or something, but he fulfills an important function in the plot. And then you kill him and write him off and you know that the audience is going to be happy to see this son of a bitch die. But on the other hand, now you're short of a villain and you need to uh, you know, bring in someone even worse or uh, uh, somehow ratchet, ratchet the suspense up and, and the, the jeopardy up in some other way. But for the characters who are sympathetic, particularly the viewpoint characters, because when I write a viewpoint character, I'm, I'm inside their head, I'm inside their skin. I am them to a certain extent. So it's almost like you're, you're killing yourself. But you know, I've, I've looked back on this um, and I've been doing it my entire career, even before I had a career. I mean, I, as when I was like a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old, I was writing for comic book fanzines. And, I remember one of the first things I wrote, a little amateur story about a, a superhero I called the White Raider. And it was published in a comic fanzine when I was like in seventh grade. And the White Raider dies in his first adventure. That was powerful. I also had letters published in the Marvel comics of the early 60s, uh, Dear Stan and Jack, you know. And I had one letter in an issue of Avengers, an early issue of Avengers, praising to the sky uh, an issue earlier about the character Wonder Man. Wonder Man was a, a, a guy who joins the Avengers, a new superhero who appears and he joins the Avengers. But he's really a supervillain who's been created to join them pretending to be a hero, join them on the false premises, and then destroy them um, when their guard is down from, from within. But when it gets to the moment that he's supposed to destroy them, he has a crisis of conscience and he can't destroy them. So he sacrifices his own life and dies instead. I love this comic, it was terrific, and I wrote this incredible letter saying how great it was, and I look at it and say, it's like my whole career there. It's a great character. He seems to be a hero, but he's really a villain, but at the end, he's redeemed because he can't do the villainous thing, but he gives up his own life and dies heroically. All the things I love to do in my own thing, Stan Lee was doing it in 1964 or something like that, and I was reacting to the, to the death of, uh, of Wonder Man. I don't mind being part of a team, but there's something in me that wants to be the captain of the team. When you're writing short stories and novels, yeah, yes, you may have editors and, and, and all that, but essentially the writer is king. The writer decides how everything is going to be, and people can give him suggestions, and he can say yes or no to that. Now, when you get involved in, in television or film, um, you're working with a large team, and that's great. You have other creative people and you can have, and they all have ideas too. And some of them have their own areas of expertise, costumes, and they come up with costumes that you never would have dreamed of. And special effects people, they're, they're magicians and, and set designers and all that suddenly show you a, a sketch of something that you've only designed. And of course the actors bringing their own interpretation to it. All of that is, it can be very exhilarating. Um, but it can also be traumatic because sometimes their creative vision and your creative vision don't match and you get the, the, the famous creative differences thing that leads to a lot of conflict. And it's hard enough to come up with a good story and good characters and things like that, but in television and film, not only does the writer have to come up with that, but then he has to fight for it politically. Uh, in some cases, in some cases, you're very lucky and you're teamed with people and you all have the same vision and you're all on the same page, and in some cases, no, there's, there's butting heads and there's clashing egos and there's debates and, you know, and then you get totally extraneous things like the studio with the network weighing in and they have some particular thing that really has nothing to do with story but that has, relates to, some, well, this character is, has a very high Q rating so we, let's give him a lot more stuff to do even though he's a rather unimportant character but the actor takes off and you have to deal with stuff like that. You know, eventually if you, if you want that creative control, you have to uh, put in your dues, work your way up through the system, and, and get to the position where at least you're the captain of the team, where you're the showrunner in television or, or a producer. 